Hello, and welcome to the Select Science webinar titled Automate Colony Picking and Forget About Toothpicks. My name is Anita Ramanathan, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. I'm delighted to introduce our speaker, Jana Langhoff, an application scientist at TCAN. In this webinar, you will hear about Cyrobotics Piccolo Colony Picker, an add on for TCAN liquid handling platforms, Piccolo's unique features, and how it can help you pick bacterial colonies, among many other applications. Plus, you'll learn how the combination of colony picking and automation can save you time and money. Just before I hand over to Yana, I want to mention a couple of things. We'd like to make this webinar as interactive as possible. So please feel free to ask any questions at any time by clicking on the Ask a Question button at the bottom of your screen. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. You can download related documents in the Resources tab at the bottom of your screen. Also, an on-demand link of this webinar will be available in just a few days. Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite Yana and would like to thank her in advance for her presentation. Please join me in welcoming Yana. Thank you very much, Anita, for the kind introduction, and welcome, dear listeners. As already explained, I would like to talk about automated colony picking and how this can save you from toothpicks, tips, or whatever you're using right now to pick colonies by hand. But why would I automate colony picking in the first place? Let's talk about this in the beginning. Then I will show you examples on where and how you could use Piccolo. And in the last part of this discussion, I would like to show you what you would get if you would order a Piccolo colony picker today. Just before we start, we would like to show poll questions between the sections. Feel free to answer them. So why would I automate colony picking? First, manual colony picking is error prone. When I was still picking colonies manually, I actually really liked it, up to a certain point. And I hope you don't argue with me on this point, but it is quite easy to do, but also easy to mess up, especially if it's not only 20 plates, but 50, hundreds, and more. And I remember I was once picking into a 96-well plate, and everything went fine until my colleague stepped up to me and asked if I would join for lunch. And I looked at her and say, said that I would in a minute. And when I looked back down again on my plate, I had no idea where I left off with inoculating the media. And I was actually lucky then because I noticed and I just could continue with a fresh plate. But mistakes are easily made and sometimes only noted much later when the results differ from the expected. So errors, especially in cloning experiments, lead to repeating an experiment and worst case to start from the beginning if all the precious plasmid is used up, which of course is a throwback in timelines and if you sum it all up, increases development costs. Secondly, it is a very repetitive task. If manual colony picking is done in a high throughput manner, it becomes very likely that people become bored out and leave the job, increasing the fluctuation of lab personnel and making training of new people more frequent and adding to the training costs. And of course, picking is just time consuming. We had a group at the institute I once worked for doing big library screens. And for the picking days, they would actually go around and ask people if they could help them. And sometimes this would work for them because others could make time, but sometimes they couldn't process all they would like to. So picking can create a real bottleneck in the workflow. And I hope you don't argue with me, but there's always experiments that are more exciting and complex than colony picking. And wouldn't it be nice to have more time to address them? And then there are the more subtle issues like picking variability. Normally people, and I have to include myself here, have favorite colonies that they pick. This is not bad per se, but it creates inconsistencies if picking is done by different people or if the method has to be shared with another group or laboratory. Traceability. 
By hand, it is very hard to trace colonies from source to destination and throughout the whole process, actually. Writing all the data manually into LIMS is a pain. And once picked, the morphology or the look of the colony is gone and forgotten. But sometimes it is really nice to have the chance to go back and have another look at the colony that maybe gave the best result, just in order to learn or to categorize. So sometimes automation is not about speed, but simply about standardization and process traceability. So how does automated colony picking work with Piccolo? I would like to show you a short video. It explains how one can select colonies in the software and shows how the actual picking is done then. There are two options to select the colonies. First, manual selection. All the parameters have to be entered manually, like, for example, colony size in pixels. Circularity, distance to neighboring cells, and so on. Once applied, the software shows what colonies would be selected for picking, and then one can sort according to different preferences, like the small colonies first, or the ones located on the edges of the plate, um, round colonies first, so according to the shape, and so on. The second option is called Teach from Selection. For this, there are two tools. The first is a selection tool that lets you select any spot on the plate, even if it's not a colony. This can be used during the run to select single colonies. The second is the colony selection tool, which only allows to select spots that are recognized by the software as colonies. And this is used to create a picking profile. For a better view, one can convert the image to black and white. And then use the Teach from Selection button to transfer all the parameters that are chosen into the software settings. So no worries about colony size and pixels, whoever knows this, um, circularity, this is really all done automatically by just one click. Once all this is done, the robot can start picking. What I really like about the solution is that there's always a choice. Either you define your colonies and save the criteria in a picking profile, which is then called up automatically during the picking process, and the robot chooses and picks the colonies accordingly, which gives maximum walkaway time. Or you stay in control, the robot shows a picture of your plate during the run, 
and you can select each single colony that should be picked. This is almost like picking by hand, just with a system that does the tracing and all that. But this way you have a chance to really pick the colonies that look best to you. So either pick colonies fully automated or pick the colonies that you like best. But why automating with Piccolo? Well, sometimes picking is a delicate matter and it is not sufficient to simply stab the colonies. And the beauty of using colony picking on a liquid handler is that the full liquid handler software can be used to define the picking process and it is possible to really imitate hand movement. Like shown here, a scratch movement where the tip detects the agar surface, goes one millimeter into the agar, scrapes sideways while aspirating and then moves back out again. But also little sideway movements or something like a multi-stabbing is easily possible to get as much material as possible. And then, as you saw in the video, the teach from selection function may, makes it easy as thinking to create picking profiles by just clicking on the colonies that look best. As mentioned in the beginning, Another plus of automation is the possibility of tracing. You can stop wondering if the right clones were picked because Piccolo assigns a number to each clone along with other data like coordinates, size, shape and so on and tracks the colony throughout the process. Also, and this is a feature I personally really like, Piccolo takes a picture before the picking, so you can always go back and have another look at the colony that maybe gave the best result. And of course, this data can be exchanged with limbs. Here we'll start with our first poll, and these are the possible answers. First, I am already using automated colony picking in my lab, but I am looking for alternatives. Two. I am considering to automate colony picking in the near future to increase throughput. Three, I would like to increase reproducibility by automating colony picking. And four, I am currently colony picking by hand and will continue to do so in the future. So what can Piccolo be used for? And in this section, I would like to show you examples of what our customers do with Piccolo. First, monoclonal antibody development, where basically the whole workflow can be automated from steps of the construct generation to protein extraction. Here it really helps that picking movement can be adjusted and picking can then be very gently in order to keep the cells viable. And because in these applications the number of cells picked is quite high, the tracking of colonies throughout the process becomes essential. And of course, an optional integration of a CO2 controlled incubator helps to increase walk away times. Just as a side note, Cyrobotics offers a whole variety of add-ons for TCAN robots which help to complete the automation of a whole workflow. So, for example, the PicoCell is designed especially to pick very small colonies in liquid media, for example, like stem cells. Or the GF Piccolo is a device quite similar to the Piccolo, but it is able to detect and pick fluorescent colonies. And what, about, what I like about um, this solution is that the software not only detects the fluorescent intensity but also calculates the ratio of colony size to fluorescent intensity in order to really pick the best producers. All right, genetic engineering of plants. Evogen is a biotech company in Israel who is interested in generating plants with high resistances to drought, salts or diseases. They use a big Freedom Evo robotic platform, including the Piccolo, to automate different workflows like primer normalization and stock dilution, primer amplification, oh, sorry, PCR amplification, PCR purification, restriction, ligation, colony screening, colony picking, culture inoculation, 
free stock preparation, um, plasmid minim prep, sequencing preparation, heat shock transformation, and agar plate preparation, which brings us up to a total of 13 different processes. And this is what they stated. The colony PCR screening days used to be a very stressful time in our laboratory. Hundreds of colonies had to be picked into hundreds of PCR reactions, each composed of a different primer set. Colon colony picking was our main process bottleneck, but we also wanted to automate other main upstream and downstream applications. And by integrating colony picking into the liquid handling platform, TCAN offered us exactly the throughput that we needed. Biotech. So Yutsnap in Russia is a company in the food industry and they do quality control. They also manufacture food products like um, sourdough or protective cultures for meat. Beside colony picking, they also do microbial identification where they spot colonies onto a target for multi-tof analysis. Here you see the picking workflow that they automated. First they prepare their agar plates, then they plate their colonies, do the picking, inoculation of the media, and then they do sample prep from Maspec. They screen the bacteria straits for salt and acid resistances, um, growth rate, acid formation, resistance to bile, formation of aromatic compounds, and suitable growth media. And they are using the pictures Piccolo take to do a long-term analysis of physiological characteristics of their microorganisms. A group at the University of Montreal is using a liquid handling system to support and investigate um, protein-based synthetic biology approaches to develop artificial circuits and sensors. And they study mechanisms of cell growth and cell division and combine nine single applications into one workflow, which gives them a higher throughput and also saves them a person who will need to sit down and pick all these colonies by hand. And they automated the following workflow. Um, they do a PCR setup where the PCR itself is actually done offline. Then a PCR cleanup and DNA normalization, setup of a Gibson assembly reaction, preparation of um, agar plates, transformation, and plating of the cells. And if you're interested in this step, you should download the attached application note because they found a very easy but cool way to automate the plating step. Next, the picking of colonies is automated, the inoculation of media and the DNA extraction for sequencing on one hand. On the other hand, they automated inoculation into a colony PCR to confirm the cloning results on an ag agarose gel. Majoran Lab Automation is a company based in Spain who is developing bioethanols for bio biofuel production. They are working with cellulose producing fungi, where picking from the edge of the colony is essential in order to inoculate with the most vital material. They developed this special picking movement I showed you previously to mimic what they were doing by hand so far, a scratching movement. They also use a feature that one can choose from where to pick in the colony. So they only pick from the outer edge of the colony, which you can see here in the picture where the picking left the white dots. This gives them the opportunity to transfer uniform amounts of mycelium, which is very important for them to get efficient growth. And with automating this process, now actually one person is able to do the work in two days, where five to six people were working for a whole week before. And as stated, Freedom Evilware and the Piccolo software allowed Myuran to define a unique picking procedure that achieved 100% microinoculum growth for subsequent ex experiments. Also developing alterna alternative energies is the Madrid Technology Center of Repsol in Spain. In contrast, they use 
protein engineering in order to develop alternatives for fossil fuels. They pick up to 10,000 colonies per week into 96 well plates. After picking, they extract the target protein in order to test whether the introduced modification did the desired difference. So the first step of automation is the colony picking and inoculation media before on the next morning the target protein is extracted uh, for an enzymatic assay, which is then run overnight and ready for readout in the following morning. And because they are running the enzymatic assay overnight, they can save up to 12 hours. In the end, they are selecting the best performing candidates for further investigation. And in order to, tra um, to trace the entire process, not only the colony picking, they use barcodes on all their plates. And this is what their lab actually looks like. They have two liquid handlers. One is just for plating and the other one is for picking and the enzymatic assay. Here comes the second poll and I ask you to answer the following questions. First, I would like to automate just the colony picking part of my workflow. And second, I would like to automate other steps in my workflow as well. All right, I was talking about Piccolo for a while now and I really hope you were wondering what Piccolo actually is. Piccolo is a cyrobotics colony picker add-on for TCAN robots that picks bacteria, fungi, algae, phagi, mammalian cell colonies and hybridomas from semi-solid media. But because of its practical design, it also picks basically any small object that you can see by eye and that would fit through a regular piper tip, like for example zebrafish eggs or plant seeds. And with this, as you already saw in the examples I just showed, Piccolo finds use in a broad variety of applications like synthetic biology, bioprocessing, um, stable cell line and monoclonal antibody generation, microbiology, of course, and many others where either something has to be picked or sorted. The Piccolo itself comes with a high-resolution camera, an aluminum backlight carrier, which fits 90 millimeter Petri dishes or SPS format plates, and this Piccolo software, which makes Piccolo what it is, fast, easy, and flexible. Piccolo can only be used on a liquid handler and this is what it looks like. Um, this is an example of a middle-sized robot. Here you can see the liquid handling arm to which the camera is attached and which holds the tips for picking and pipetting. A robotic arm that does all the plate and lid handling. Storage space um, for plates, we call them hotels. The computer a stacker for petri dishes and the piccolo light table. And you can see some tip boxes here and some plates there, but depending on your workflow, modules can be added or rearranged. So placing a colony picker device onto a liquid handler gives you really a complete solution. As you saw, you can integrate up and downstream experiments and get rid of tedious pipetting tasks as well, even as simple as just filling plates with media or setting up a PCR reaction. The work deck is very flexible, so if you're done with picking, you can simply remove the piccolo light table and use the space for something else. You can either set up the picking as a walkaway solution or load plates interactively, and this is really dependent on your application. You can integrate a wide range of additional devices to adjust the automation of your protocol. And what makes the most sense to me personally is that this uh, solution is sizable. And it really depends on your throughput needs, the space in your lab, and money, of course. And by the way, this solution is quite affordable. You can use different plate formats, and the most important thing, results are reliable.
So in the end, it's more than just picking, and picking is not the end of the story. Piccolo can be integrated with upstream PCR setup and cleanup, nucleic acid purification, plating, and so on, but also with downstream applications like DNA extraction, um, sample preparation, protein purification, and many more in one system. And this is something a standalone colony picker will never really do for you. Here I would like to ask the last poll questions. First, I would like to have a Piccolo system in my lab and I will apply for funding. Second, I would like to have a Piccolo system in my lab, but currently I don't have any funding. And third, Piccolo does not meet my expectations and requirements. So here's something for you to take home. Free up your hands on time. Picking really is boring, and I'm sure you can spend your time on more exciting tasks. If you need more than just picking, Piccolo is an affordable solution for you to automate up and downstream experiments and create extended walker wind times. With automation, you can count on reproducible picking, no matter who's picking. And look forward to error-free processing, because data can easily and automatically be exchanged with your limbs. And with this, I thank you very much for listening, and I'm now open to take your questions. Thank you, Jana, for an informative and enjoyable presentation. Now let's move on to the final part of today's webinar, the question and answer session. We have some great questions. Um, the first one is, can a user design a custom path movement for the pipettes? For example, go to this XYZ position and then do this, or a direct injection of a picked colony, not into a well plate, but say, drop into a tube that is placed on this particular position. I hope you got that, Jana. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, in principle, yes, because um, this is down to the liquid handling platform, actually. It has nothing to do with um, Piccolo. Um, but um, in both software, the Freedom Evoware software and um, Fluent Control software, um, this is possible. So you can define customized um, tubes or um, locations where you want to go and um, drop things. This is absolutely possible. And okay, yes. great. Um, the next question is, how fast is the piccolo? Um, this is highly dependent on first the picking movement and also on the liquid handling platform. For example, um, if there's a scratch movement or an aspiration step or also multi-stepping, um, this will slow down the picking, but it can go as fast as 1,000 colonies per hour. Anita? That's great. Um, the next one is, what data is provided by the colony tracking record? Um, this is really customizable, and it depends on what, what, the, need, what the user needs to know or what um, data one is interested in. Um, Usually, or as a standard, the coordinates of the colony, um, the size, the shape, and also the number that matches up with, up with the picture that um, Piccolo takes, and of course, the destination well on plate. This is all in the tracking record, and it is usually in a um, text file or a CSV file. Um, yeah, but it is dependent on what needs to be in the picking report, this is, um, can be easily adjusted. Anita? Okay, great. Um, the next one is, can the Piccolo be used with other liquid handling systems besides the TCAN instruments? <laughs> um, unfortunately, or for me not unfortunately, because I love this uh, module, so I don't like to share it, but um, no, this is designed for TCAN robots only. Anita? Okay. Um, the next question is, what type of sample can the Piccolo pick? The Piccolo was originally made for picking bacteria. Um, 
But as you saw also in the examples, our customers started to pick other things as well, like fungi colonies, um, algae, halo producing colonies, um, and also really successfully pick hybridoma. And um, it really depends because it's just a camera and a saucer basically. It can detect everything that um, can be seen by eye, and this is a um, rule of thumb. So if you can see it by eye, Piccolo can too. And um, then it's just a matter of getting it transferred to another location. So it has to fit through a pipette tip in some way. And we really have customers who also pick um, zebrafish eggs. So it's really uh, diverse what you can pick with a piccolo, not just bacteria cells. Mm. Anita? All right. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Thanks, Yana, for today's informative discussion and the presentation. And thank you for joining us online and for your interesting questions. I hope you found this session valuable. If we didn't manage to answer your questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is on your screen. It's anita.ramanathan at selectscience.net. And I'll personally follow up your questions with Yana. Um, you can listen to this webinar once again or invite to a friend to listen um, on our on-demand link that will be sent to you in a few days. Once again, thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time.